Hi everyone and uh, welcome to today's podcast. We'll talk about glide reflections. Um, we know so far that any isometry is a product of up to three reflections and uh, we basically finished, uh, we found out everything there is to know about the products of uh, up to two reflections. So we have uh, uh, either single reflections, which are odd isometries, or uh, even isometries, which are either rotations or translations. So, uh, today we'll consider products of three reflections, and it seems like it's a complicated case, depending on how the lines um, A, B, and C are situated against each other, but in fact, um, it all boils down to this key particular case that we will consider first. So the simple case, uh, simple but key case that we'll consider first is when um, A is parallel to B and C is perpendicular to both. C is perpendicular to A and B. So finally we're attacking the product of three reflections in uh, in a generic case. So in particular case uh, cases we have seen before, uh, we know it uh, It may be either um, three lines concurrent, then we know it's a reflection, or three lines are all parallel, again we know it's a reflection. But now uh, we have uh, the case when A, B, C are neither concurrent nor parallel, and in that case, uh, let's start when A is parallel to B and C is perpendicular to both of them. So we have this situation. And uh, such transformation will be called a glide reflection. With axis C with axis line C. All right, um, so let's try and figure out its uh, key properties. How, um, how uh, do points get moved around by this transformation? So let's start with some point P here. What happens to it? Uh, so first, uh, first of all, it's moved by this translation. Uh, so maybe to make it more convenient, let's uh, drop the perpendicular M onto C and uh, rewrite this translation AB. There is a unique way to rewrite it as, um, um, maybe let's call it L. Uh, LM. So this has to be the same directed distance uh, from L to M as from A to B. So then these uh, last two reflections can be rewritten as gamma is equal to sigma c. And instead of b, a reflection in a followed by reflection in b, we will write reflection in l followed by reflection in m. Right from a to b, same directed distances from l to m. So then uh, we have uh, our, our glide reflection rewritten like that. Let's apply it uh, to P. Let's see what happens. So if we plug in P, then we will have sigma C, sigma M, sigma L of P. Uh, the latter one, of course, uh, will just take P to itself since P is right on L. So we'll have sigma c, sigma m of p again. And what happens under these uh, uh, two reflections? The last two reflections combine to create a, you guessed it, half turn around the intersection. So this intersection we will denote big M, this intersection of M and C. So we'll have 
Big mom. So this is the image P prime. Uh, so the last thing we do is uh, half turn in this in this case we can just write um, given any point we can just write glide reflection as a half turn around some point M on the axis of reflection. So what does this tell us about on the axis of glide reflection, sorry. So what does this tell us about uh, properties of glide reflection? So first of all, uh, what about the fixed points? What do you think? Are there any fixed points? So for which uh, P gamma of P is equal to P itself. So when can we have P prime equal P? So if you think about it, um, it's always uh, a uh, half turn around some point on the axis um, always different always different from the original uh, point P, right? M is never uh, the same as P um, so no matter what happens uh, as long as uh, these two lines are distinct and uh, they are since uh, A is not equal to B. Otherwise, we would just have a single reflection, not the product of three. So since A is not equal to B, we have that uh, it follows that M can never, can never be equal to P. So this will always be distinct from P. The image here will always be distinct from the original. So, no points are fixed. Um, we notice also that uh, the point and its image are, are always have the midpoint on the axis of uh, glide reflection. Um, if you think about it, uh, what other transformation, what other isometry has uh, has an axis. Uh, also reflection, single reflection also has an axis. And if you think about uh, properties of a single reflection, um, it has the same exact property. The uh, point and its image have the midpoint on the axis of reflection. So, uh, but unlike the reflection, the glide reflection fixes no points at all. Everything is moved. Okay, uh, what about lines? What about fixed lines? So let's assume, let's uh, imagine for a second that uh, some line L is fixed by our glide reflection. So we concluded, first of all, there are no fixed points. Gamma of uh, T equal to prime never equal T. And now we want to talk about fixed lines. No fixed points. Um, well, uh, again, uh, let's uh, make an analogy with uh, regular reflection. Uh, what does that do? If you uh, think about the two half planes uh, that um, axis of uh, reflection, of glide reflection has, so let's say this is a regular reflection, it will interchange these two half planes. This goes up, uh, the up half plane goes down, down half plane goes up. If we have glide reflection, then again any point is moved uh, to its image so that the midpoint is on the axis. So it, it has to go across. So if you think about it, the half planes are interchanged as well in the glide reflection case. So glide reflection interchanges half planes of C of the axis of light reflection. So 